Good morning, everybody. What's up? Sunday morning worship. What's, what's good? I want to, hell, I almost didn't make it this morning either. Stand up, make sure. Good morning, good morning. What's up? Whew. I'm telling you. No pain, no pain, no pain. No gain. Good morning, y'all. Damn. Got to get that alcohol in when you do that little run. Then mess around and let the sun catch you. Damn. Damn, I'm sweating like I'm trying to escape from somewhere. Whew, but I made it yet again, y'all. What's up? Uh, I'm not going to let this be a long live. Here I go again. Uh, I know. I try to keep it under 20, 30 minutes, but I guess when I get on a roll, start talking about stuff, and then other stuff pops up. And, but you know what? One hour and 15 minutes. <clears throat> I'm going to try to spare y'all this morning, because I know y'all, some of y'all are getting ready for church. I guess going to the second service. What's this? 9.35? So some of y'all late for the first service. Shame on you. And, uh... Go ahead and make your reservations for the after eat spot because about 12 o'clock. Yeah, you're gonna be able to get in there in your favorite spots. Kiosha Miles, good morning. So, anyway, let me get started real quick. Y'all know how I do a little house cleaning. Let y'all know about the short story that I wrote. It's called The Greatest Pain Ever Felt. A conversation with an absent biological father who never wanted to be found and I found out about him by accident at age 22 and uh, talked to him for the first time, I think at 26, 27. He never wanted to meet in person. And that's so at age 39, I finally just worked up the nerve to look up some addresses that were attached to his name on the computer and the internet. And, uh, and just drove. And my goal was to drove. Good morning, Lynn. My goal was to drive to the to all the houses on that list to find out which one is his. And I did that because, hey, it's something I needed. It wasn't about him. It was about me. So when I went up to the door, knocked on the door, he came to the door. I saw my body. After I had already heard my voice on the other end of the phone for all those years. Uh, so what's up? He's like, hey, what's going on? And uh, he said, so how did you find me? And I said, uh. Google Map, MapQuest. He was like, uh, hey, uh, I have to give you an A for effort because I've worked aggressively over the years to prevent you from ever finding me. If y'all like to read all of that, all that happened within that story, with that story, hit your boy up on a cash app, $10, $10, dollar sign Rico the Opinionist, that or PayPal. And uh, if you decide to hit me up on the cash app or PayPal, please send an email address. Because the short story is a 40-page PDF file. It's in the PDF, so I can um, email it to you immediately after upon receiving your payment. And thank you in advance for your support. And after you read it, please let me know what you think, okay? I'm always curious to know. But those uh, who've read it, they said it's a, they refer to it as a page turner, an uh, emotional roller coaster. And wow, Rico, I'm sorry you went through that. It's cool. This part is, you know, when you find out by accident who your fathers are. I mean, I guess it was a family secret or something, but my aunt spilled the beans. I was still a student at Gramlin State University when it happened. I was still an undergrad or going into my senior year or something. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a sucky night that night. Just all the stuff I've been told, you know, man's being lied to. I was like that Aretha Franklin song when Fantasia sings it. Even when Aretha sings it. And uh, it goes, um, don't play that song for me. 
Cause it brings back too many memories All the things I once knew All the time I spent with you Tell you darling Let me tell y'all she lied I tell you she lied y'all She lied, she lied, lied She tell you, I tell you she lied Yeah, that's what it's been like Don't play that song for me Y'all go look up Fantasia singing that song at Soul Train Award. And look up Aretha's. She's trying like, hey, I felt like I was lied to. Come on, somebody. And, uh, damn, y'all must have liked my singing. Y'all live. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, so, yeah. So, if you like to get that, get at me. So, let me go ahead to my two topics. Uh, I don't know if y'all been on social media. Well, at least on Twitter. Or, and I'm sure it's been shared on Instagram or wherever. Uh, that uh, our illustrious uh, edible, delectable, delightful, <laughs> absorption consuming Shikari Richardson, she uh, tweeted, uh, I guess out of nowhere, I guess upon, uh, I guess in, t- in conjunction with the, the women's Jamaican track team winning first, second, and third place at the 100 meter race. They took all the slots. They let them keep four. Good morning, Molly. And uh, they won first, second, and third. And she tweeted, Shikari Richardson, miss me yet or something like that, right? Go, you can look it up. And uh, the mixed re- the reviews or responses were, <laughs> were uh, mixed, lukewarm at best. Somebody said, nope. And then somebody said, and they pointed out, which is the fact that uh, she qualified for 1086. Those women ran like 1081, 1082. I think 1081 was the lowest. I think, I didn't know Shelly Ann. Shelly Ann came in second, my baby. Shelly Ann Frazier Price. And she's married and stuff with a little baby. Well, that little dude might be four years old now. And uh, that's who I fell in love with, with on the Jamaican team. Shelly Ann Frazier, my God. When they interviewed her, man, she was like doing this, like this ditzy wine when she was, you know how the, the track ladies kind of stretch their legs and kick their legs a little bit, but she was like, she was doing like a, an easy ditzy wine. And, she, and they said, Shelly Ann Price, Shelly Ann Frazier, you know, um, this is Shelly Ann Frazier, she's running in lane two or something. She like, what the wine down, boy? What? And I, my face was glued to the TV ever since. Watch out, girl, that damn Caribbean accent on a beautiful chocolate sister. Whew. And then she kicked ass in that race so this is probably like four years ago or maybe six years ago when i first laid eyes on shelly ann frazier and she's been killing now this new new jamaican sister the fastest runner who kind of, who beat her in this race and so the point is shikari no sweetheart we didn't miss you because uh if you had run in that race little mama you'd have come in fourth because your time was 1086 and those women were 1082 1081 or something like that 106 they were them Jamaican, Jamaican sisters ain't playing. And uh, let me, can I do a side note here real quick? So based on how Shelly Ann Frazier Price has been looking and these little dark-skinned, brown and dark-skinned track girls coming in all out of all these colleges and whatever, running track for the Olympics or professionally running with these sponsors. What's with the platinum blonde weave and shit? What's with all that? Well, wow, that's ugly. You know, Shakari wasn't the first one to do it. You know, there was others, uh, Shelly and others before her, but she's part of this new wave of dark-skinned, brown-skinned chicks wearing this ugly-ass weave. Blonde, and some people say, well, that's to get attention. But I thought if you want attention in a competition, you know the best way to get attention in any competition? Come in first or last. That's how you get attention. Don't stop looking like a goddamn clown. Looking like you like you running with your hair on fire. Looking like a, one of those almost look like Storm, goddamn it, from uh the Avengers or whatever it is. She looks crazy. And then you black girl, all of them got on orange and blonde and platinum. It's just stupid. What's up, Corey? Just, I don't know, some people think that's cool. I guess they say, Rico, you being petty. It's all about them running. Well, yeah, but. <sighs> Still ugly. And back then, they had the nerve to add tattoos to the shit. Y'all just have no interest in looking like girls, huh? <laughs> What's that, uh... 
He said, I know shit, Rico. What about we, period? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that shit's just weird. And, you know, but go ahead and do y'all. You know, do y'all. If it makes you run faster, go ahead and... But it's just stupid. It's weird. It's not necessary. If you're talented, it's just like somebody go up in a spelling bee. They want to be seen in a spelling bee wearing a goddamn Ronald McDonald wig. If you want to be seen in a spelling bee, goddamn it, spell all the words and come up, come in first. Good morning, Eric. Big bro. And so, but I want to say this to Shikari. Uh, sweetheart, don't don't be tweeting out stuff talking about we miss you. We're trying to let you make it. Because you obviously broke the rules and tried to hit the weed. I mean, I'm sorry, the edible. And so... Shakari, what you should be doing, if you're going to tweet stuff on social media, what you should be tweeting to all the people who gave you all the passes and excuses for you breaking the rules to, to hit the weed, I'm sorry, the edible, you know, her mother just died. Uh, even though they had, they had no relationship, she was just suffering from her mother's passing. And how would you feel if some reporter that you didn't know, some strange man tells you that your mother passed away? Oh, and uh, she was dealing with anxiety. They gave her all of the... Naomi Osaka, Simone Biles passes and excuses for that, for making those kind of choices. And what you should be doing, Shikari, is tweeting us on how well your counseling is going. Do what Simone Biles does. Show us a video of how you still doing your, how you do it still. No, she, she sent out a video showing that she's still flipping and twisting. So, Shikari, sweetheart. Obviously, I don't know if it's out of ego why you did that or attention starved. I don't know why you did that or put that tweet out there. But if you want to tweet something, show us video of you practicing for 2024. Show us you coming out of the therapist's office talking about those issues that the people said that you had. Okay? None of them were PhDs. Not on what licensed clinical social workers, not on what licensed professional counselors, but they all said that you, you know you're suffering uh, from trauma and the pain of losing your mother and, and anxiety. And I, 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 in my head, you know, I said, I think she knew that smoke was coming from the Jamaican chick. And she's like, shit, I don't want to, I didn't get a reason not to get in that thing. Because she's going, if at a 10 6, if she had improved, if she had improved up to, uh, 10-5, I mean, 10-8-5, or 10 8 what is it, 10 8 still would have come in third, about third place. Those Jamaican chicks are not playing. So anyway, that's what you should be tweeting about, Shikari, sweetheart, okay? You know, I'm just, just trying to tell you, because we still love you, just get yourself together. Uh, tweet about how your rehab is going, how your recovery is going, okay? Uh... But Molly said, Molly said, but people got other people out here looking like clowns, telling Shim they look good. <laughs> Fake love is real because her real friends would have told her, thank you, Molly. He said, a blonde ish is so ghetto. It's just ridiculous. Any weave is hood, unless it's like a, you know, if you can have hair that looks, a little, little something that looks like it can grow out of your head, black women, that's that's not a problem. Like your fro wigs and fro stuff, the curly but all this platinum blonde and orange and purple and green, all it say, all it speaks of is mental illness, tattoos and shit all over you like you just broke out of men's prison. Cut that shit out. But hell, they look like that in the women's prison. What am I saying? So next, let me get to this very touchy topic that that our, our community kind of grazes over. They know it's there, but they don't like to talk about it. Uh, this young brother by the name of uh, King Randall, the first, he's. I guess uh, he's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. He tweeted out uh, his experience about being molested and talks about how child molestation, child molestation is so prevalent in the black community, right? And, he, and also, if you've kept up with him, he's been on various blog, talk, blog shows, podcasts, and little TV shows, and they happen to be the only black one. That, hold on, let me start. Let me, let me slow down. He's been talking about lately is a lot of his young men that he's uh he's been taking in and for those of you who don't know who King Randall is King Randall is a young black male who was on Roland Martin's show and Roland Martin tried to talk crazy to him all because he found found out that he was a conservative and tried to minimize him and the young man would say look we're talking about doing for self and that dumb big face ass Roland Martin talking about some what does do for self mean <laughs> these bought off Negroes are a mess somebody is paying you bills. But anyway, 
and uh, he 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 came out of that situation. Coach Chiefs, good morning. Looking like he, he just blew up. His spot blew up after Roland Martin came out, came across as attacking a young man who's trying to help. Y'all brace yourselves, black boys. We seem to have a problem across the board with aid and mentoring and service to black boys. If it's not talking about single mothers or black girls, you don't need to be talking about no damn black boys. That's, well, that seems to be the message of the narrative. And if you start a nonprofit, if you want to get some money immediately, say, I'm trying to help underprivileged girls and teenage mothers and single mothers, you'll get the money right away. You ain't got shit for boys except for a football and a basketball. No kind of mental health or emotional development. Well, this young man is doing mental health and emotional development. He's a young man himself, just 21 years old. And at 19, he was taking in young boys of the juvenile justice system and those who probably couldn't stay at home anymore. And so that's just the background of who King Randall is, and we should be applauding him. But it's so interesting that it's not the mass majority of the black community that's applauding him all because of his political stance, because he's a conservative. And he's and he never said he was a, and, and then conservatism these days is automatically connected to Trump. He never said he was a Trump supporter. He said he was conservative. I'm an independent with but with a conservative twist, meaning how our, our parents, grandparents were, and how fr newly freed slaves were. That's how in their conservatism they, they, they set up what's called a standard of behavior in society. That's conservatism. Young men are supposed to go out and work and hunt, gather, provide for their families. That's conservative talk. Young ladies are supposed to cross their legs when they sit. Young ladies, the only thing open after midnight is 7-Eleven and you know what? That's conservative talk. Thank you grandmas of the world when they were grandmas. Now we got these glamas and, and GGs and shit. What kind of bullshit is that? A GG? Accept your goddamn rightful place as an elder ma'am. GG, Glamma, we, we all fucked up in our community. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but anyway, so, uh, and so that's the con kind of conservative I am in doing for self because we had scholars that taught us this way back in the day. And so this young man, that's what, that's the, that's the script that he reads from. Uh, that's the script that he reads from. And so, uh, what's this? GV was up. And so that's the script that this young brother reads from. And so it's very interesting. Whenever I see him on a program, it's always some conservative program, a white program, a white blog, a pod podcast. How come he has not been um, interviewed or a documentary done on him by BET or TV One or why isn't he on these hot, hot nine rap stations? He's a young black man. What, well, so he has to have been in jail, and a young man did a, a couple of years in the military. He just said, "Hey, this is what I want to do." Oh, and uh, what's that? And and out, what's that part of Alabama he's in? Damn, because he said there's no nobody trying to help black boys in his little town, and so he just uh, he decided to take it upon himself at 19 years old. So, and the black community have not embraced him, but they've embraced Cardi B. They've embraced. The twerking for Meg the Stallion, but they want to embrace this young man who's doing something for other young men. Again, red alert, he's trying to help black boys. That's the problem right there. I said it out loud. I'll continue to say it. We have an issue in this issue in our race with black boys. And how the hell are we gonna continue our race if we don't have strong, developmentally strong and mentally strong black men? Dr. Jawan Kajufu said. Counter Conspiracy Destroy Black Boys, Volumes 1, 2, and 3. He said, back in the late 70s and 80s, if you want to destroy a man, you must destroy him as a boy. So this young man is getting broken boys, bringing them in his home. So, but it's interesting that he's always on these white, white formats, talking about black boys. And he says, well, you know, if others want to come through, but his, we know his focus is black boys. And so he gets on Roland Martin, Roland Martin could have used that time to become the greatest elder in our community. Instead, he found out the boy was a conservative. He would turn into a pure you did, pure you do GIS boy. That's what my brother used to say to these old lame ass beta males. What a GIS guy ass. <laughs> my brother's funny. Boy. And got in his feelings. 
and wanted to hold, wanted to, you wanted that young man to be, to be the spokesperson for an entire conservative movement, and all he's trying to do is hell, help black boys in his little small town, black town in Alabama. Oh, Georgia, I'm sorry, is it Georgia? Alabama, damn, get my shit together. And so, uh, uh, so he put that, he was talking about, he's talking about in these white platforms about child molestation in the black community. And, uh, he wrote about how it's a lot of these young, young people who are, who turn out to be gay are molested as children. And that is a cuss word in the LGBT community. See, when you, when you throw in molestation and you throw in the foods, these, these foods that has poison, you no know, sprayed on them and they're growing and it's processed food and how when those foods are ingested into the body or into a pregnant mother's uh, stomach and all of this and she sees eating these foods and it goes down to the baby, they don't understand the biological aspects of it. Meaning the XYs and YY, the chromosomes get all tampered with. And so not only uh, does that cause you know, some type of you know, mutation or something that's going on. A lot of young, young children, a lot of babies are born, you know, with limbs that are not growing in right or limbs all messed up, as well as coming in if the YYXX chromosomes are messed up, guess what? You got too much estrogen in a boy. You have something psychological going on because whatever the mother ingests, it goes to the child and the formation of the child. <laughs> he said, "Rule the worst enemy of the black man." Yeah, and so, uh, and that stuff causes birth defects, right? And it's interesting that when a baby comes out with uh, thirteen toes or an extra eyeball or a short arm, they call it a birth defect. Because what's considered a perfect baby is uh, all the toes, all the fingers, and the mind, and the mind is developing, and all of that stuff. That's considered a healthy baby. How come when a baby is born not what we consider normal, he, he's born and he's acting out gay uh, behavior, that's not considered a birth defect? God damn, Rico, you did it again. Now, are you just saying born gay is a birth defect? Well, I just compared it to what we all consider to be a birth defect. A baby being born without all the toes, and, and it, if they come out mentally underdeveloped, it's called Down syndrome and all this stuff. Then they come out thinking they're a girl or a boy, a baby coming out, being socialized to think that they're a boy, and when they're a girl, and a girl, when, they, when they're a boy, and blah, blah. You know what i And coming out with the propensity to... to like the same sex, y'all don't, don't think that's a birth defect? Okay, now that's why they want to talk about sex, you know, child molestation. See, the LGBTQ does not want to have that 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 narrative of like Lady Gaga put it out there, born this way. No, yeah, you're born this way, but let's talk about what what contributed to you being born this way. And they say homosexuals. Oh boy, is it God, God, what, what is it? Uh, how they say? Yeah. God didn't create homosexuals. You're right. God, God doesn't create homosexuals. The food that the pregnant mother ingests creates that because it starts messing with the biological development of the unborn, of the developing baby. So, you, so having said that, let's get into... Uh, further than what uh, King Randall was saying. He was saying that he was molested as a, as a child by a grown woman. That's another thing we don't want to talk about, how grown women are molesting as hard, if not more, as hard as or not more as men. When we hear about child rape, we always got a man's face up there because for the longest time, we always looked at the men. You know, and Big Mama knew who was touching on the little girls, one of her little lame-ass sons who wants shit. He around there. You know, she'll, she'll be at the house, but he's still there. Grandma's your uncle, probably like in his 20s or probably 30s or just a sad-ass 40-year-old. As all the girls, his nieces and stuff growing up around there, he around there touching and looking on the girls, looking at the girls. Now he's got there now. You know, we want to pretend that Antoine Fisher wasn't a real book and it wasn't a real movie and he wasn't a real person. Anyone's ever read the book, ever watched the movie or heard him speak? It was a woman... That, that assaulted him as a little kid. So we got to get that together. And Big Mama keeps all the secrets. Hell. 
she knows, but won't tell it. And then, then the, the little girl grows up liking girls or hates herself, and the boy's growing up either liking boys or he tried to be the biggest hoe in his junior high school and high school and college, try to get all the pussy like he's just going to run out. See, that's the problem. All that stuff. Now, he's like he's trying to cleanse himself of what happened to him. So we don't, and all we say in our community, we don't respect the science of psychology, human development and human growth. We don't pay attention to it. We just think people just develop on their own. Hell no, it's a lot of sciences to this thing. And also, the LGBT community don't want to admit that, you know, they got a lot of predators among them. Because, uh, you know, people like Billy Porter, who's on that show Pose, and he's always trying to get attention by dressing like a chick at the Oscars or the Emmys or whatever, Golden Globe, trying to out, out woman all the white women there and all the women there. You know, and he was recently on Tamron Hall talking about how he was molested and how the black community was so homophobic they turned their backs on him. And But you know what he didn't mention and, and put in the emphasis on? Yeah, he, he said, I was molested by a man. Stop right there, Billy Porter. Uh, Lee Daniels. I was. He said I was molested by a man. That means he was, two things that happened at this party. LGBT. If he was molested by a man, that means same sex. That means he was molested by a homosexual member of the LGBTQ. P. And then also, if he was a child and he was an adult and he was a grown man, that's called pedophilia. So that means he was a, he was molested and assaulted by two members of the LGBTQP. How come he don't call out the LGBTQP for turning out children? Go to any gay parade. I've never been to one. You know, you see them on TV and stuff. They have children out there where these men are walking around naked. And also, you have these elementary schools where they have grown-ass dudes dressed like Caitlyn Jenner reading bit, uh, fucking nursery rhyme stories to, to uh, first kind of, no, daycare, kindergarten, first grade, up to third graders, trying to turn them out early, normalizing the mind, in the minds of developing little babies and children. Then they want to push Lil Nas X all on everybody. Are y'all following the trend? When you want to destroy a man, you have to destroy him as a boy. When you want to normalize your foolishness or whatever you want to want people to know and love, you put it in their minds as children. And we act like we don't see this stuff. So my man King Randalls was just talking about child molestation, how it impacts the development, the psychological and emotional development in children. And so some guy tweeted him, his name is, uh, what's his name? God, dog. Uh, Ray Nunez. Uh, dot com dot org. That's his Twitter Twitter name. Ray Nunez dot d o t org o r g dot org. Ray Nunez. That is a thousand percent untrue, and it's very homophobic. See, there's that word again. When when they want to, as Kwame Brown said, they want when they want to shut down the conversation, they throw a word out there. And homophobic seems to be the word that make they think they're supposed to make everybody shut up. Well, thank God I don't believe in that word. The words I believe in two words that actually happen in real happening in real time. Black melophobia, I created that. Black melophobia and heterophobia. Those are the two things that are actually happening. There's a hatred of black boys and black men for the sake of being black and being born male and straight. And being straight and male. That is black melophobia. It was called anti black male misandry. The hatred of boys, the hatred of men. That's misandry. We need to pay attention to this stuff. So that's going on. So, they, oh, you're homophobic. All of a sudden, the conversation shut down. We ain't doing that no more. The shit is over. You ain't shutting us down with one goddamn word. Homophobia. That doesn't mean anything to me. Because I'm not prejudiced against gays, people because they're gay. What I don't like is the politics of the LGBT. They think they can just shut everybody down. You got the game wrong. Those days are over. Those days are over. People are speaking out against this shit, and I'm glad, because this liberal left that y'all elected in this damn, damn White House, y'all thought, y'all thought the, the right-wing conservative was, y'all thought that was bad, but we just ignoring all the bullshit that's come out. They let the, they opened up the asylum, they opened, they raised the tent and the circus, they opened up the cages at the prison and let all the weirdos out. Now, your daughter finna start, finna go to a bathroom stall in the fourth grade with a grown-ass nigga in a wig. And it's going to be legal. And while y'all ain't paying attention, they're just sliding pieces of legislation, county by county, state by state, man, boy, lover, 
information. Man, boy, lover laws. They're called NAMBLA. Y'all saw that on South Park. NAMBLA, National Association of Man, Lover, Man, Boy, Lover, North American, North American Man, Boy, Lover Association, something like that. Yeah, they're passing the laws, and we're just playing games. Got to shut this crap down. Nobody has a problem with people being gay. We just don't like the politics of these bullies. And you can't stop free speech. So, he gonna try to come at the young king, young uh, new emerging king, Randall, King Randall. And of course the guy got his hat handed to him, his ass handed to him. I tweeted him, like, dude, that's all facts. And me being a social worker for the past 25 years, I've worked with grown men and grown women. Black, white, Hispanic, others, gay, straight, uh, in the closet. I work with all of them. And guess what? In the men that I work with, and especially the black men I work with who were gay. Whenever we talk, talk in our one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions, it always, if, it, if I talk to 25 of them, guess what? 23 of them said that they were molested as children. And the LGBT doesn't want to talk about that. The big brass, the political wing, the big money bucks of the LGBTQ, P, P is a pedosexual pedophile, they don't want to talk about it. And that's what's going on. It's more so than being born Lady Gaga gay so because it's enough room for everybody what i don't like is all right you got your space but why you got to cover over in other people's space so we can we make jokes about you we made jokes about everybody else yeah you know, y'all got worse than jewish people you can't say nothing but they can say any and everything about everybody else yeah i said it yeah more people need to be saying this is the last platform i got so shout out to you brother king randall i'm sorry that the black community has not embraced you embraced you and send you the donation that you so surely need and Mason just offer to help like that. But as you know, we always let we always send them stand out the way and let Caucasians do the work that we should be doing. Because a young black male. He probably I'm sure he has some people work with him. But you think out of forty million blacks, at least five hundred thousand of us are like, look, send the man fifty cent a piece or two dollars a piece. To make sure he has what he needs and all the, all the social workers in that area and the, and the state that he's in, you know, help the brother out. You know, but, uh, and he talks about the struggles of dealing with the parents of these boys. That he gets out of, juvenile, out of juvenile custody and those who say, look, can I live with you because my folks ain't trying to have me. Now he's like, come on, man. You know, he's, you know, he's trying to build a school, and I knew they were going to jack that up because I, I just hate it when he talked about it publicly a lot. Because just, they don't want to see you do anything for black boys, I'm telling you. Dr. Mark Johnson have a whole lot of, had a whole lot of pushback, not just because of him, because his rhetoric didn't help, but also because he wants to do stuff. He wants to, you know, raise black men, black boys to be black men. And also he speaks about special education and how they put this ADHD diagnosis on your children to, to, to inhibit them and to hold them up. So if you don't want your nonprofit to prosper, say you're doing it for black boys only. But see, let me tell you all something about this. And also pay attention to language. If black people, I'm sick of you. Every time something happens to black folks, the first thing you, when you get a national platform, the first thing you say is, well, you know, we have to do these things to prevent all this from happening to black and brown. Would y'all stop saying that stupid shit? Y'all ever hear brown people say, well, something happens to them, we need to stop this from happening to brown and black. Y'all, black folks are stupid. We're so busy. We, we just want to be, man, we want to be cool with everybody. And I have to go in, I, I don't have to, but I do. When I hear them say black and brown, I have to, let's say, for example, this recent uh, video is going around, this white cop is all on this black girl, right, for whatever reason. And uh, and this black dude going to get his ass, these beta male simps, I'm telling you, god damn, they're, they're plentiful. Well, you know, we have to stop this behavior because these cops are all out here trying to get our black and brown kid. But I said, I, wrote, I uh, responded to him, I said, uh, there was no brown people out there on the ground being tackled by the police. It was, that was a black girl only, fool. <laughs> they don't seem to understand. It's like it's a script we're given and we can't shake it. And some of us are not, we're not really, we're not bright. We have college degrees and professional certification, but we don't have common sense demand for a dog to sneeze with. God damn. Whew. It's not, because they do them. 
and nothing against Mexicans and Latinos and all that. They, but they, they, they built the fence around their group. We act like we can't build the fence with our own goddamn nails, hammers, wood. Like we scared to have our own or something. It's okay to speak about yourself. It's all right. It's not against the law. And when the motherfucker, like I said, when they holler, they, they slogan, they say, uh, um, they say, when, they, when they're doing them, they say, Viva la raza, meaning the race. They don't say, Viva la, la raza negros. They don't say that, dumbass. What's so wrong with black folks? It's I, I swear we get dumber by the summer. Now, y'all know what I'm talking about when I say, we, there's people in our communities with big platforms. And also, number two, I need you for the 50th goddamn time and mainly black chicks to say this. Stop saying people of color. You know, women of color and, you know, men of color. No, it's not people of color, goddammit. We are black people. We are infinite by which colors derive. See, if you read the books of our scholars, we'll have to be saying this slow ass shit in 2021. We just ignore all the works of Dr. John Henry Clark. You know, Dr. Ben Yakahana, Dr. Ivan Van Sertema, Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Frances Cress Wilson. We just ignore all the works of the scholars who died poor trying to teach this so-called woke-ass generation of black folks. It's, it's weird. It's, 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 a, it's beyond annoying. It's beyond annoying. We are not people of fucking color. We are black folks. We're the only ones who can make color. God damn. Don't know your history. Don't know who y'all. Therefore, you don't know who's y'all. Letting other people tell you. You know, people of color are minority. Ah. And they sound like they sound so intelligent. So we try to speak to appease white folks. We don't try to speak to appease God. Oh, my God. Let me stop right there. I'm going to have to repeat that. We speak, we try to speak to appease white folks. We never try to speak to appease God. And I'm not even a religious dude. I, be, I, just li I believe in God and nature and the two in reality. This ain't no Bible stuff. This is reality, common sense. Man, something wrong with the Negro in America. Weird as shit. This behavior. They didn't want to sit back and debate the goddamn Willie Lynch letter, and, it, and we living it every goddamn day. It wasn't a real letter. He wasn't even a real person. <laughs> well, explain this goddamn behavior then. Yeah. We just, we came here like, and it's okay to have your little white friends and have sex with white women and have sex with your white men. Yeah, it's all, you can do you. But see, that, that, that kind of confuses things. When you start talking about black issues, but you laying down with a white woman, you laying down with a white man, I don't care who you lay down with, but I'm just saying, when you jump the fence, move on and shut the fuck up. Your, your issues are over. You've, you've conceded. You've waved a white flag, no pun intended. You've gone on over to the other team. You understand how this works? We are at war. Europe versus Africa. Always. Now the Asians have gotten in on the war. They've double teamed Europe, Asia, and against Africa. That's what this stuff's about. We're going to get it one day. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to share that. I had something else I wanted to bring out, but I don't want to muddy it all up because those, those are the main two topics. But uh, I may come back in the morning and talk about this, this particular issue. Again, if you have not purchased my short story, and go ahead and check. It's only 10 bucks. 40 pages of me talking about, you know, the greatest pain ever felt, the conversation with my absent biological father who never wanted to be found. Oh, man, it was something too. It's only ten dollars, cash app, Rico the Opinionist. And if you decide to purchase the short story, uh, please send an email address with your cash app payment so I can email it. It's in PDF format only. And uh, I think some people who bought it, they probably printed it off and buying it on their own, and, uh, so they can, I guess, flip the pages they read. But anyway, I appreciate the support in advance, and I do have a topic. I want to talk about in the morning concerns my, my beloved Grambling State University. Just and It might be a petty moment to some people. It's just some observations I like to make. There's certain things I see, and other people see it, but they they pretend they don't see it. But anyway, I wouldn't be me if I didn't see it. You hear me? And speak on it. Y'all enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Uh, yeah, enjoy your families and stuff, and enjoy the rest of the day. We'll talk later. Peace.